today we are going to talk about money. And we are supposed to be live. Okay. Yay. Anybody who's watching right now, uh, be patient because this is a new program for me. Hey, I see us on <laughs> Facebook. Beautiful. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm so excited. I'm joined by Lene Kimura. She's a life coach and she teaches emotional freedom. So good. So good. Okay. But today, we are going to talk about money. Something that I find that not a lot of people like talking about. Well, some people do, and that's all they talk about, or it's not something to talk about at all. So we're going to dive into this a little bit. Hold on. Let me uh, let me get some coffee in me for a second and load up my questions here. So check this out. <gasps> yeah. Oh. Okay. This is cool. I haven't seen this tool before. I have watched so many YouTube tutorials on it, and I've never been brave enough to try it, but now here we are. So Sweet. <laughs> it's, it's so cool. Uh, you can, like, preload all the titles and questions and everything. So in a second, I'll pop up our first question. Oh, my gosh. You're kidding. I That's know. so cool. <laughs> it's going to be so great. Okay. Thanks for having me, by the way, Rain. I'm really excited to be here, and I'm excited to talk about money. Yeah. It's been too long, my friend. Too long. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> or, or the perfect amount of time. Who knows? But that's true. That is true. It just feels like too long. I'm impatient with the universe sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> okay. Well, let's jump into our first question. Okay. Why do you think it's hard for people to talk about money? I love that question. And I have asked myself that question many times. Um, so just really, really briefly, my money story is that I used to tell a very painful money story. I used to make, you know, what most people would consider a pretty good salary. And I still felt broke all the time. And I thought the answer was to just get rid of money and take it out of my life and to not think about it. And why do we need money anyway? I just want to help people. And so then, you know, I spent a number of years doing that, helping a lot of people, not getting paid. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to start a business. And a key ingredient of business is money. If you don't have cash flow, you do not have a business, really. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so in the process of my evolution, I have gotten to realize that money is not the way I thought and I have been able to rewrite my relationship with money. So that's kind of the story that's going to pop in through here as we go through these questions. So why do I think it's hard for people to talk about money? Um, I love that question. And I would, I would ask first is how do you feel when you're talking about money? How do you feel when you're thinking about money? That mm -hmm. is the reason why it's hard is because yeah. of how we feel. And the reason that you feel the way you feel is because of how you're thinking. So mm -hmm. if you are thinking painful thoughts about money and you feel very, very uncomfortable, you're not going to want to talk about it. It's going to be really hard to, to talk about. So how, like, why do we think the way we do? Well, we kind of come into human life, not knowing jack shit about money. And we are, we are taught from a lot of different sources starting from a young age, how to think about money and how to talk about money and what's appropriate and what you should do with money. And this is kind of an unavoidable part of human life, I think, because everything that we do, everything we interact with involves money to some point. That is, that is just something that is that like, that's a fact. That's just the way life is right now. And we don't have like you and I individually don't have control over that. That happened long before we were born. It'll continue long after. So mm -hmm. that's, that's like the circumstance that we enter into kind of as humans in this time in our life. So I don't know about you, but I learned a lot of things about money when I was young. And yes. I, I was kind just going to bring that up. I was like, <laughs> I love how you bring that part up. Cause like I had teen parents, so oh, yeah. we had like, very, very little growing up or when I was growing up. So yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, no, that's great. Yeah, yes, exactly. So we probably, when I say that, anyone who's listening is going to think of something that they learned about money when they were young. Mm-hmm. And the reason that that's a problem, well, <laughs> okay. So the reason I think it becomes a problem is because we realize that something is not jiving with us. It's like something about the way that we're thinking is not working for us, but we don't realize that we feel the way we feel because of how we're thinking. So Mm -hmm. most of what we learn from an early age, in addition to money, just in general, is we learn this lesson that external things outside of us cause how we feel. Other people can hurt my feelings. Other people can disappoint me. I can disappoint my parents. I can Mm -hmm. cause somebody to be angry. I can, I can cause someone to reject me. So mm-hmm. when we, when we put the, the cause of our feelings on something outside of us, when we are believing that we become totally powerless mm-hmm. of how we feel. So mm-hmm. that, that really is the core of what I teach in emotional freedom is that thoughts cause our feelings. We can think on purpose. We can choose how we think. Therefore we can choose how we feel. So, so is, tangling those thoughts with money just like anything else or is there something a little bit different about it you know that's a really good question um so I think maybe these are just my current thoughts of today right and they're constantly evolving but right now where my head's at is I used to think that money was very much different than other things and now I'm seeing it more as kind of kind of like continuous with the fabric of the universe, continuous with everything else. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I have some thoughts stored for a future question. Mm, Yes, probably. Sorry, I'm going off script. Terrible. (laughs) Okay, so let's, I think this will be right where we need to be. Oh, perfect. Yes. Okay. Um, This is so cool. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, it's perfect. So currently I view money just like any other flow of energy. It's almost like the faucet is running and I put my hand underneath the water or Mm -hmm. I'm breathing in and I'm breathing out. So one of the, one of the analogies that, that I think of is if I only breathe in and I never breathe out, I'm going to be out of balance. If I only Mm. breathe out and never allow myself to breathe back in, then I'm going to be out of balance. And so money is kind of like that. We are never just in stasis with money. It's always flowing. It's flowing in and it's flowing out. And we can, we can like block or allow money to come in. We can block or allow it to flow out. And, but, but the basis of how we do that when money is in our, in our environment, in our circle, under our control is determined by how we think. So um, I just remembered something I was going to say a second ago that, that how we are thinking about money so often is how we think about everything, which is from a perspective of lack, from a perspective Mm -hmm. of not enough. So Mm -hmm. if we're viewing money as not enough money, guaranteed you're viewing other things as there's not enough. And that's that's the feeling that we're generating when we're thinking that. Mm. So I I view money like a flow of energy. Um, A couple of years ago, I learned to... I, I learned Reiki and I learned uh, a few new methodologies in hands-on energy work. And mm-hmm. that was really interesting for me because it was a very, it's a very specific sensation for me. Mm-hmm. It's different than an emotion, right? Like it's a sensation is something that starts, you sense it in your body and it goes up to your brain, your brain registers it. Whereas a feeling or emotion starts in your brain and it resonates throughout your body. It starts in your brain, travels down to the body. Mm-hmm. So for me, energy work was like, I was, I was feeling some sensations there. And I'm like, this is, this is an interesting sensation and I can choose with my mind if I'm going to allow energy to flow through me. And this is, this is like universal life force energy, which Mm -hmm. I I view as continuous with everything, with you, with me, with money, like it flows through everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was sitting there thinking, this is really interesting. How can I be so comfortable allowing universal life force energy to flow through my body and out my hands or, you know, just to, to flow through me, however it does and, and be so deeply uncomfortable with money. And the difference is how I was thinking about it. Oh, yes. That's so great. So, um, like I was saying, my 
parents were really young when they had me. So I had all these different influences about negative like emotions and feelings about money. And for a long time, I didn't realize that those were like, I thought that that was just how I always viewed money. Like that's because that's just how it always was, you know, and it wasn't until I really started to open myself up to other things. There's like you're talking about with this Reiki practice, like there's, there's these things that you encounter. You're like, oh my gosh, why can I feel this way? And like a huge contrast over here with something that's part of the same thing. And I love, I love that inhale, exhale um, example, because money is always flowing in, out, up, down, and that stresses people out. Like, they're like, no, I don't want to see it go away. (laughs) I want it all in or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And just notice though, like the reason that you feel stressed when you're thinking about money is like, I don't want it to go. Mm Mm-hmm. And yeah. when you when you pull that thread just one layer deeper, it's going to be well because I'm I'm afraid that no more is going to come in. I'm afraid that there's not enough. Mm-hmm. Oh, mindset of lack. No bueno. No bueno. It doesn't feel good. No. Yeah, and so I guess I'm viewing money as as an inherently neutral thing, not neither positive nor negative. But my mm. experience is how I measure it. So our emotions our guidance. And when we feel negative, that lets us know that something in the way we're thinking is out of alignment with who we really are, or it's an an opposition to what we really desire. Have you noticed that that's hard to talk to people openly about that money isn't always negative or the root of all evil? Mm. Because I feel that a lot. Like I will test, you know, certain conversations with certain people and see their response, not just because like I'm constantly testing people. It's just like, I'm curious to know like where everybody is at. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, there's some seriously strong responses that are just like, no, it is like the source of all that is bad and corrupt. And I'm like, not, but it doesn't like, it's just like anything else to me personally. Yeah. Yeah. My main thought on that is that, uh, I, I too find that really fascinating. A lot uh-huh. of times we are really attached to how we have been thinking and believing about something because we base our life decisions on it. Mm. It's like the premise that informs the jobs that we take, uh, the kinds of people that we surround ourselves with, what we do with our time, with our mm. life, really. It it has like there's there's a lot of kind of interconnected meaning. It's like we give it, we give it so much meaning. And so if I'm really attached to my worldview or my perspective, and I have used that perspective to inform so many of my choices, it's really scary for me to think about questioning all of that because Mm -hmm. then, then like, will I question my choices? Will I have regrets? Will I be wrong? Our our brain hates to be wrong. I know. (laughs) It really does. (laughs) It's like, what are you doing? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. totally. Okay. So we're running short. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. One final thought on that is that it yeah. also plays right into that perspective of lack. That's mm-hmm. like, if I question what I think about this, or if I'm wrong about that, then this is really, really bad. And it's going to be worse than I thought. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what are some ways that we can kind of break that cycle of lack in our thinking or uh, break bad habits that we have around our thinking with money? Yeah. Yeah. So when I think of our habits around our thinking, um, I I don't really view habits as good or bad, but, Mm. but like, I think what you mean by bad habits is like bad feeling. Yes. How can I stop making myself feel bad about money? So the first thing you can do is ask, what am I thinking? That's the very, very first step is to find out so much of our thinking just kind of like fades into the background and becomes Mm -hmm. on auto. And so we're just thinking by default. A lot of this stuff goes back to childhood. We're just like, oh, I've been thinking that since I was eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, (laughs) yeah. It doesn't have to mean anything if you find a thought that's kind of nonsensical. We've got a whole bunch of them rattling around in there, right? So the first first step is, what am I thinking? One of, uh, I've done this a number of times. I just write money is on a piece of paper and just finish that sentence a whole bunch of different ways. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, another way that you can... uh, shift your thinking on money is, is ask yourself, and I've done that around of this recently is um, what are some memories that I have that around money that have an emotional charge? 
And how can I clear those? And I've done forgiveness work on of those emotionally charged memories of money because what's happening when you have something in the past that is still affecting you today is you're that situation is over. It's done. But what Mm. I'm doing in this moment is bringing that thought into my awareness today, which is causing the feeling I'm experiencing today. Mm. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be carrying a whole bunch of my past thoughts into this present. I don't want to be bringing or activating that vibration of those thoughts today. So the Mm -hmm. first step is is to, uh, to be aware. So just to set your intention to become aware of what you're thinking about money. Mm. And uh, I actually, this goes right into first step towards better alignment. Is that next? Oh, good morning, Tabaski. Which question? The, what oh, is the first step. step towards better alignment. Yeah, that's our next one. Okay, so let's just kind of flow right into. We'll that go one. back and forth. Yeah. Okay, so after you know what you are thinking, the next thing you can do is think of other ways to think about it. When you ask your brain a question, your brain will respond with a bunch of answers. So mm-hmm. just. Start asking your brain different questions and you'll get different thoughts. What are some other ways that I could think about this? Is it possible mm. there's another way to look at this? Mm. What if I've gone wrong? What if, <laughs> what if I'm exactly where I need to be? And so then what you do from there, so that so you ask yourself, what am I thinking? Ask mm-hmm. what are some other possible ways to think about it? Three, reach for a better feeling thought. So your emotions mm-hmm. are always, always, always going to be guiding your mind in the right direction. Mm, so, I agree with that so, yeah, so, so we much. We just like, spend all day policing our thoughts. And that is just, it's not a good use of energy, to be honest. Mm. There's like, some amount of thought awareness that is super, super valuable. But once you've done some awareness, you can look to your emotions to let you know. So if I feel bad, if I feel negative, then that's letting me know. It's giving me information. Mm-hmm. One of the that it might be bringing me is that something is kind of out of whack with my thoughts. If I reach for a better feeling thought and I feel better, then Mm -hmm. that lets me know that I'm moving in the right direction towards what I want, by the way. This is not like absolute. This is all relative to what I want. Yes. And sometimes I, for me personally, sometimes I just have to grab even a neutral thought. Yeah. Some, because if it's too, if it's too much, if it's too far in the other direction, like just something neutral. Yeah, <laughs> so we real. can break even right now. Yeah. Yeah. We can't just go from a super bad feeling thought to super good feeling thoughts. It feels like a lie. It doesn't feel believable. So if you move yeah. any amount towards the, towards the direction of feeling better, then mm-hmm. you, are, you are on that path to feeling really good. Yeah, totally. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for letting me pick your brain around money and exploring these thoughts and giving us a little bit of direction on how we can shift our thinking with money because it is so free flowing and it's not all that a lot of people think that it is. And I'm ready to shift that thinking. Yes, same. Um, I have so appreciated speaking with you about this. And the final thought that I want to leave is that when we want something, that feels really good. It feels really good to desire something. And when we can clean up our thinking, clean up our emotions, we are going to be able to remove all of the stuff that is in opposition to what you want so that it can come to you. Mm. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you, my love, for joining me this morning. And I hope that we will do this soon. I would love to do that. That would be great. Thank you so much, Rain. Yeah. All right, my loves. Happy Friday. I hope that you have a beautiful day. It's supposed to be nice and bright and sunny today. And I have got a whole day planned with my babies in the park. So enjoy. We'll chat soon. Ta-ta.